don't you? <laughs> no, I'm not dead. I'm very much alive. Barely. <laughs> well, actually, I am really alive and well and always will be, and I'm going to continue to go on no matter what. But that reaction I just made uh, earlier is a prime example of why did I have to sit through this god awful, overrated, you know, boring, uninspired, uninteresting, shitty, crappy sex movie that I had to sit through for the entire two hours that I will never get back. Yes, and it happens to be based on the fucking Twilight fan fiction that's done by, by a woman who might as well be another version of that hack Stephanie Meyer. Her version, a book that's actually adapted into a film that I'm about to review today. And that is called Fifty Shades of Grey. Which is more of Fifty Shades of Boring, Fifty Shades of Stupid, Fifty Shades of Pure Fuck Up Shit. That's what this Fifty Shades of Garbage that this movie really is. And that's not saying a lot. The book itself is a travesty beyond book writers everywhere. Every offer out there who's already feeling violated already by having to, to read every single shit that's written in the book that almost makes Twilight look like a fucking masterpiece when it comes to reading shit on the book. Yeah, mostly, you know, fragments and... <laughs> and errors and all that stuff. I think it's all written right there, but I think this one seems like <laughs> like something that even Shakespeare would have would have actually loathed to the death. Because this film and the book is as horrible as I can imagine. And the sad part about this mess, I can't believe this movie even exists. Yet alone Twilight. Which no doubt about it, this is definitely one of the worst movies that I've had to sit through out of all bad movies out there. Even the ones that are adapted from books that are terrible, like Twilight. It's ten times worse than Twilight. It's ten times worse than any other crappy movie I've seen. Mostly bad comedies, action movies and all that. That's been going to pure waste. You know, especially the Aaron Sister and Jason Friedberg movies. And yes, folks, it's even worse than the Justin Timberlake movies. And boy, that's saying a lot, too. <laughs> yeah, and it's also worse than, than Pauly Shore and... Actually, even I want to... Oh, God. I, I know, I can't believe I had to say this, but even it's... Even a Pauly Shore movie is entertaining than this. Movie 43 is like a fucking... Oscar winning masterpiece compared to this. And not only that though, it makes me want to sit through Fred Ficklehorn countless a thousand times where I had to hear his irritating, screeching, nails on a chalkboard, chickmunk voice. That's high pitched. Okay, I know I'm overreacting to this, but. It's just sad that you've seen something this sick, whoopy piece of entertainment that we have here that suddenly wants up becoming the highest grossing film of all time that's even this bad, this horrible, that it almost makes me want to go stick two fingers in my mouth and vomit all the way. It has bad acting, shitty dialogue, Horrible editing and a bad choice of music. Not to mention that this movie had a good location that deserves better than this. 
and the way the film was shot in sort of in a dark atmosphere with a lot of you know beautiful shots here and there or some sort I don't and the way that it was going for and the fact that this movie was given the praise that this film was going to give an NC-17 rating for the movie and the fact that they overhyped this movie to death by trailers, TV spots, and even ads out there that almost looks like a bad Calvin Klein ad and even masqueraded as one. Yeah, with, especially with words like curious and all this merchandising that they had including wine and t-shirts and <clears throat> all this other stuff that they got from the movie and books it's just shocking that people had to sit through messes like this that I just wanna go around and punch a wall with my fist that's how I felt when I had to sit through this mess well, here it goes, and I'm going to put my glasses on because I'm having trouble with my vision, having to sit for this mess. It stars Dakota Johnson, who happens to be the daughter of actress Melanie Griffin, who gave us a lot of hits such as uh, Something Wild, along with Cherry 2000, which I really enjoy, an underrated uh, action flick in the mid that's sci-fi. Sort of in the tradition of uh, Mad Max and all that. Jamie Dornan. Yeah, new actor, I think. Elise Mumford. Jennifer L. Marcia Gay Harton. Yeah, a very talented actress who's been best known for her role in Miller's Crossing. As well as Flubber. And the movie Whip It. I know she's been in several films in her career, but I never thought she would be in this mess as part of her resume. She deserved better than this. Victor Basuk, Luke Grimes, Rita Ora, singer by the way, yeah, most recent singer. Max Martini, Callum Keith Rennie, Andrew Arley, Dylan Neal, Anthony Pacini, Elmi Fonda, and Rachel Skarstein. It's written by Kelly Marcel, which happens to be based on the E.L. James novel. And it's directed by Sam Taylor Johnson. The movie begins when a 21-year-old Washington State University undergraduate student named Anastasia Steele, also short for Anna, or or Anya or whatever but it's actually Anna which happens to be my cousin's name by the way yeah go figure shocking isn't it to say the least but that's okay because Anna's a cute name and so is Anastasia yeah great way to name your character out of a popular story and book she wants up staying with a roommate named Kate Cavanaugh who suddenly became very ill and is unable to interview a wealthy, a curious uh, businessman who's 27 years old named Christian Gray, who actually works at his company headquarters in Seattle, Washington, for a newspaper story. So Anna decided to agree to go there and meet what seems to be a handsome young douchebag in which Christian is very interested in her, her speech and everything. But soon after, he arrives at a hardware store where Anna works, and suddenly Christian decided to deliver the communist address at the Washington State University that Anna had agreed to request a photo shoot, you know, to be part of the article. So after the photo shoot, Christian actually invited Anna to have coffee but wants up leaving very quickly, only to confuse Anna for what's going on. But during her graduation, Christian decided to send Anna first edition of a book called Tests of the Yuba Bills, which Anna had celebrated with his own friends. 
in order to celebrate, you know, they started drinking and and dancing into a dance club. Stupidly, she winds up calling Christian to tell her, you know, what's going on and everything. So, very concerned, she winds up going to the bar to find Anna, who suddenly passed out and vomited. And yes, yeah, she did vomit her right. Which apparently, you know, Anna thought that since she was already drunk and everything, she, she thought that you know, his friend was actually trying to make love to her, but then suddenly, you know, Chris, by that minute alone, was about to uh, punch his lights out. Yeah, which he almost did, actually, so. Yeah, what a dick. So the next morning, she wokes up, you know, with uh, medicine and orange juice, you know, to help her out. Yeah, she he even wrote in the, the signs on on a notepad that says, Eat me and drink me. Yes, I'm not kidding. This actually happened. You know, she is relieved when when he said that they did not have sex at all, like because he was sleeping with her uh, on his bed. But then, when by the time Anna and Christian has been seeing each other all this time, Christian asked Anna his deep dark secret behind all of this, and this includes one of the biggest problems in this entire fucking movie was when he wanted to ask her to sign a non-disclosure agreement that prevents her from, from revealing anything about their relationship with each other. So that's where he starts to express his interest in, in using his subculture relationship. Christian's dark secret actually lies ahead when he took Anna all the way to his master complex where he actually develops his own playroom and which Anna actually joked around saying why does it have a place that has uh, Xbox or something yeah she actually said that in the movie well it turns out it wasn't any ordinary playroom that she actually fought it turns out to be a playroom that's filled with nothing but whips chains, handcuffs, ropes, all the other kinds of parts that actually uses women as sex slaves. So this is the kind of uh, sex toys that he collects inside his master playroom enough so he can actually, which Anna had told uh, Christian that this is the kind of game that he, he would use against all 15 women that he has in his life to actually go around you know torturing them in a very fun way yep which is BDSM yeah hit bondage as we speak and this is the kind of film that got me angry even more when I saw this and it gets even worse after all of this when it starts to show nothing but sex scenes between Christian and Anna. And it was edited in a poorly way. E even as the song was playing at the background, and it's really crappy songs too that they played in, it started cutting very awkwardly at a split second between one scene after another they even show scenes of uh, Christian and Anna you know actually making sex in the tub making sex on their bed and even um, doing a lot of torture sex games between them and it goes on and on and on and on it's so ridiculous and that's where the fun starts which is not fun it's having to see them whip tortured, a lot of spanking, a lot of punishments, and, and all this other crap that, that he's doing to her, and it really boggles my mind. I didn't even like the language that they were going for to the film. With a lot of dialogue, you know, mentioning about what he was going to do to Anna, and all this, so that's what I got. So then... Anna had revealed that she is actually a virgin. So what we'll consider this an agreement and negotiating with her own terms. She and Christian begins a sexual relationship 
that includes one of those practices that he desires. So, between all of this, Christian decided to give Anna some gifts, uh, such as a new car, a new laptop, and all this other stuff, so that way they can have one good relationship after another before goodness knows what's going to happen. And it gets even worse and worse and worse as Christian started stalking Anna everywhere she goes, you know, especially when they're, you know, going on a plane ride. And, yeah, even when he was visiting, you know, her parents and already visiting their parents, you know, having all these meetings and you know, talk about what they're doing and all this other stuff. So as all of this had happened, Anna started to realize what, what Christian has had to offer her by coming up with his own stupid rules. He came up with a rule by that will constantly will, will become more concerned that's going to make it even worse than ever. And by the time he mentions those rules, that includes her punishment, was that the Christian was going to whip Anna's buttocks six fucking times with a belt. That's right. He's going to keep on doing that if Anna doesn't obey his commands. And I couldn't believe it. I actually saw this movie. The entire running time. And he even had one of the worst endings in the movie that kind of plays exactly like how it was in the beginning of the movie. Where she actually says, Christian. And then Christian says, Anna. Or at this rate, Anna. Christian and then the and then the elevator closes the doors. Yeah, once they went inside the elevator. Oh, oh god. Let's face it guys. This movie is a disaster of all crappy softcore porn movies that I've seen. I think the sex scenes in the room was more entertaining than this, considering how over long they were. At least they weren't edited like a bitch, like the way this movie was going for. I know they were supposed to give this movie an NC-17 originally, but they wanted to avoid that in order to give it a, a pale R rating, you know, just to make this movie more, more deep with its language, because there were a lot of harsh language in this movie. And, you know, he even said the word Fifty Shades of Fuck Up in that one scene. Because he really loves to fuck. What a dick. And it's also the fact that, you know, these scenes that they shot mostly focusing on, on the males and females' bodies, I could tell that they might have just used some CGI by covering some of those shots of, of um, Dakota Johnson's body, which I believe they might have used a body double you know so they might have used another actress to replace her you know by those shots because I'm, I'm not even so sure if Dakota Johnson's body actually looks more different compared to hers yeah. or even and the fact that we never get to see uh, Christian's uh, shalong yeah I'm, I'm safe for that <laughs> although I don't think his body isn't good looking either <laughs> What's the fucking use? But what matters the most is I had to sift through this garbage. And I could not believe I had to sift through it, but I had to. It was so stupid, lame, predictable, uninspired, and it's not the kind of film I would like to sift through again and again. The characters in the movie were just basically your typical characters, just like you saw in Twilight. Or any other bad movie I've seen. The characters are fucking idiots. Especially Anna in the film. You know, she really is a fucking bitch. I, okay, I mean, she's basically totally weak. But but even at that point, at least she didn't, even she didn't want to do this. She didn't want to get involved in the relationship to Christian. I don't think she wasn't really enjoying it quite as much as it seems. But at the same time, even she felt 
that she she was tolerable into you know Christian Grey's scheme that he's coming up with and it's just making me angry all the way in fact I couldn't believe how violated I had to sit for this there was even a scene in the movie that just never would would fucking stop there was shots of uh, you know Christian and Anna just talking making conversation on their phone you know while you see a lot of pop-ups going up on screen yeah that's becoming more common nowadays in today's movies which is starting to fucking, fucking annoying to see that there was also a scene where she actually keeps saying the word that is starting to fucking annoy me now and it's been constantly said I, I think almost 50 times or so I don't know I think I lost count but it sounds like that it was uh, it was the word submissive that's right submissive I was so submissive having to sit for this fucking piece of shit and I just can't believe I had to hear all this I'm sorry I'm getting a little carried away but this is just what pisses me off the most and the fact that she's also looking at uh, some shots by putting the word submissive and actually showing shots of of girls already you know dressed up you know like uh, Donna Matrix or so and, and are actually getting ripped and all this other crap it just makes me want to throw up I don't know I just really hate movies like this I mean I can't believe they always portray women as sex slaves in a stupid way and how how dumb they really are and how how much they really enjoy you know having sex with a a douchebag who's a millionaire and he owns his own business by by talking in a deep monotone voice and giving that stupid expression he makes by you know making that awkward uh, eye contact that he does fucking horrible I, I'm not so sure if Jamie Dornan is a good actor or not but I thought his performance in this film was horrible he keeps doing that same stupid eye contact in almost every single scene and then every scene I saw throughout this movie had a lot of cuts that I just can't believe it was done awkwardly in, a, in that sort of way especially when they were making a conversation you know, after you know Anna was actually doing a um, you know trying to contact his mother you know he was you know they were just chatting around until he shows up stalking her everywhere he goes and then there was one scene where it actually cuts directly from Christian to Anna and it did it in a split second like almost one second of, of a shot of of Anna and Christian on one side and then it cuts back to him and then and then it goes back into longer scenes I never thought I would see that but I could not believe it it's just so bad and the music in the film too the soundtrack was horrible other than the fact that they did pick a good song by the Rolling Stones uh, the rest of the songs are crap pure torture all the way it's, it almost sounds as bad as as listening to a porno music from the 70s in that sort of way but it's done very awkwardly because of this editing that they put in and, I, and it's like every scene I, I keep seeing that and even worse it just never goes away but as for Dakota Johnson's performance as Anna I never find her attractive in that sort of way and I didn't think particularly in my opinion I don't think she isn't a good actress at all I mean coming from her daughter of Melanie Griffin I thought she was horrible in the film that shitty movie that just will never go away too called The Social Network yes yeah, she was in that movie I hated her character in that film I'm sorry but her character sucks and it's ten times worse here than she was in that movie and I don't know why she's being cast in several films she has on her resume 
But I guess that's what Hollywood has to offer. But as for Marshall Gay Harden, though, she deserved better than this. I'm sorry, but I thought her role as um, Christian's mother, who happens to be adopted, by the way. Well, she wasn't overacted or anything like that, but I thought she was just, just plain weak. Just, just your typical mother, you know, you, like you just want to root for her or so. It's just stupid. And even worse is that even uh, Christian also has a lot of adopted uh, families as well. Even a sister, a brother, and all that. Oh, yeah. Well, Anna has uh, a different kind of family you know, here and there. Even her friends were idiots. I didn't care for her um, her other friend, uh, Kate, you know, who happens to be a roommate, and or even the even Jose. I mean, who happens to be his close friend. I didn't care about anybody in this movie. In fact, they pretty much suck. That's all I have to say. You know what? Avoid this movie at all costs. It's not worth your time or effort to sift through. In fact, I'm not having a good time having to sift through this entire mess. Because I don't know why films like this have to be made. And the fact that it's making more money is really mind-boggling. Because even Twilight made more money too. And that sucks. You know what? Fuck this movie. Fuck this movie to shame. Because that's why it's Fifty Shades of Shit, and it always will be shit. End of story. Okay? Don't bother. It's one of the worst movies of this year alone, or pretty much the entire decade. And I've seen terrible movies already. And the sad part about this entire film was that it got released on Valentine's Day weekend. Over... A much better film called King's Men, The Secret Service. And boy, did that film deserve better than that. It deserves more money than this piece of fucking shit. Yeah. In fact, I can't wait to see much better films over this piece of shit any day before I end up seeing even more piece of shit films as it comes up. And I probably will be, too. I really don't want to see this garbage again. Never in my entire life. For the entire silver screen, TV, and many others to follow. And I'm definitely not going to waste my time with their sequels too. Even if I have to try to sift for them once more. So, there you have it. Fifty Shades of Shit. And I give this piece of crap... A horribly waste of time, zero stars, which is, might as well be 50 shades of zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. I don't know when am I going to come back, but I'll try. Bye.